Welcome friends, this is the tutorial for my butterfly pattern which we'll be stitching together today. We'll break it down in very easy to follow steps, suitable even for beginners. Keep watching! The first step when approaching this pattern will be to stitch the botanical elements which in reality sit in the background. Start by stitching the stems using split stitch. We'll also be outlining each leaf using the same split stitch. For the entire background, we'll be using two strands of thread. If you need a bit of help when separating the thread, keep watching, I will make a small demonstration later on in this video, or you can have a look on makeandstitch.com where I have a dedicated blog post about it. I will leave you the link in the description box. Continue this process until you have completed all stems and you have outlined all leaves. The next step will be to fill the leaves with satin stitch, still using two strands of thread. In order to keep your back tidy, you can still use knots. As you see here, I knotted my thread, but I'm starting from the front. I keep my knot on the front right side of the embroidery, and once I complete a few satin stitches, I will cut out this knot. This way, my back will keep nice and tidy. building up your satin stitch until you're happy with the result. Another thing to consider when stitching the leaves is to change the direction of your stitches. If you see here, all these leaves are stitched at a different angle. This will make your work look a bit more dynamic. Beyond this point, we'll be stitching the butterfly using just one strand of thread. Separate one strand of black thread and pull, while firmly holding the rest. The process of stitching the butterfly is really easy. We'll be starting by filling in all the black areas, using irregular straight stitches and in some places long and short stitch. After, we'll be adding the colors, the blues, and uh, as the, the order of work, we'll be first stitching the wings and leave the body at the last step. So, as we said, we'll be starting out by adding irregular straight stitches and filling in these black areas. One very useful, and I recommend you do that, when you're tracing your pattern onto the fabric, fill in and color in these black areas with your tracing pen. Uh, this will help you a lot uh, and uh, you'll know exactly where to place these black irregular stitches. The way we'll be stitching this needle painting project is a bit different than the usual process. As I mentioned before, we'll be stitching each color at a time. We'll start by filling all the black areas, then switch to the darkest shade of blue and fill in all the sections with this shade, then repeat the same process with the medium and light blue. This is a bit different than the usual needle painting technique, where if you think about a needle painted flower, for example, you would be starting from the outside towards the narrower area, stitching the first row of the long and short stitch with one shade, then switch to the next row with a different shade, and then again another row in a different shade, and so on, until you build up a nice shading. Then you might be asking, why are you not, we not stitching the butterfly in the normal manner? Well, 
You could stitch the entire butterfly the proper way, of course, or you could stitch one shade at a time, as I will show you in this tutorial. I find this method much easier to stitch, much easier to explain for beginner stitchers, and much faster to complete. You won't be able to apply this technique to any needle painting project, this method works really well for this butterfly because the design is really simple and we are not using too many shades of thread. For a much more complicated needle painting pattern, this method of stitching each color at a time, I'm not sure it would work out very well, especially if you are a beginner. When placing your stitches, try to follow the natural direction of a real butterfly. If you see here, these small stitches closer to the body are stitched at a different angle than the rest. Same goes for the sides, which will be stitched horizontally. Moving forward to the veins, we'll be stitching these in long and short stitch using one strand of black thread. For the wider central vein, I'm slightly changing the angle of my stitches again. Uh, this is just to follow the natural direction and flow of the butterfly. Once you completed filling the black areas of the left wing, go on and fill the right hand side too, applying the same technique. I'll just go back a bit now, because this is me forgetting to fill in this small section here on the left hand side. Now that we filled all the black areas using irregular straight stitches and long and short stitches, we'll be creating a thin black outline around both sides using split stitch. As you see, I haven't stitched that bottom border. Uh, because that area will be filled at a later stage using the yellow shade. 
Repeat the exact same process for the other side. Using split stitch, outline all those areas for the right wing too. We're not done just yet with the black thread. We need to add a few more irregular straight stitches on the sides. You can hug the black outline you previously stitched, but try to keep a neat exterior of the wing. Your stitches should be irregular towards the inside. The reason for creating those outlines in the previous step was to create a hard border on the outside, but on the inside the stitches should be irregular to create a nice blending effect with the shades we'll add later on. When you reach the top of this area, you can switch from straight stitches to long and short stitches just to fill this bit here. Go on and fill the other wing too, applying the same technique. Now's the time for the more exciting part. We'll be introducing the colors. I'll be starting with the darkest shade of blue and fill in all the areas where I want this shade to sit. This is a common strategy used in traditional oil painting to start from the darkest darks, gradually progress through the mid-tones and add the highlights right at the end. And this is exactly how we'll be stitching a few sections of our butterfly. When filling this corner here, and in general in any needle painting project where you have to fill a curved shape and change the direction of your stitches, try to keep your stitches short. You can go back to the normal length of the long and short stitch right after you pass this corner.
Now it's time to introduce a new shade of blue. This is the medium blue. Go on and fill all the areas with this shade, applying the same technique. Leave the bottom area empty, that area will be stitched uh, later on using the lightest shade of blue, that's where the highlights will sit. Remember to change the direction of your stitches in this area closer to the body. This direction should follow the direction of your previous stitches, the black ones and the darkest shade of blue. Fill in the extremities using the same medium blue using irregular straight stitches. Now it's time to add the highlights, so we'll be stitching this empty area at the bottom using the lightest shade of blue. When stitching these small three sections between the veins, we'll be applying the proper long and short needle painting technique. We'll stitch from the wider area towards the narrower area, starting with the lightest shade of blue, then switching to the medium blue and then to the darkest shade of blue. Start by creating the first roll of long and short stitches using the lightest shade of blue. When you finish stitching the first row, start the second row of long and short stitches using the medium shade of blue.
and lastly switch to the darkest shade of blue and create the third row of long and short stitches. Repeat the same process for the other two sections. The only difference is for the middle one, because it's so tiny, you won't be able to create the shading using all three shades of blue. So just create your long and short stitches using the medium and the darkest shades of blue. Now it's time to stitch the other side of our butterfly and we'll be applying the exactly same technique. We'll be starting with the darkest shade of blue, fill in all the areas where we want this shade to sit. Uh, remember to switch your direction, uh, the direction of your stitches for those tiny, tiny areas close to the body. And then just follow along and uh, apply the same process you have previously applied on the left wing. Once you filled all areas with the darkest shade of blue, it's time to switch to the medium blue and fill in the areas where you want this shade to sit. Remember to leave some bottom areas empty. You will fill those with the lightest shade of blue. And lastly, switch to the lightest shade of blue and fill in those gaps at the bottom. Once you finish stitching the wings, it's time for the last part, stitching the body. We'll apply the same technique, we'll first add the black irregular straight stitches, then the blue shades. As you notice, we don't have any hard outlines and the reason for that is we want to create a realistic outcome. So do not worry if your black straight stitches look irregular, this is okay and will only add to this nice realistic effect.
a few very short straight stitches on top of the head and also after you can outline using split stitch just the top part of the head. Once you fill the black areas, switch to the darker shade of blue and using long and short stitches, uh, fill in the body and the head. Uh, remember to leave a bit of space because you'll be switching to the medium blue as well, so we we'll have to have enough space to add a bit of highlights too. Switch to the medium blue and fill a second row of long and short stitches on the body while leaving some space for a third row which will stitch using the lightest shade of blue. You can entirely fill the head with this medium blue, since it's a bit smaller we won't have room anyway for another shade.
and now it's time to add the highlights. Create another row of long and short stitches using the lightest shade of blue. If you feel the need to increase the contrast, you can uh, add a few straight stitches using white thread, uh, same as I did, just on the extremities. Uh, what I also did, I created a very thin outline using the same white thread, just on those extremities. the last step, fill in the bottom areas using split stitch and two strands of yellow thread. And this was it guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download this pattern from my Etsy shop and use this video in addition to the PDF guide you have downloaded.